I am Dr. Wayne Searles, a private consultant for the agricultural chemical green industry businesses. I'm frequently called upon to compare different products in these industries. And today, we're going to make a comparison of two hydrogels. Hydrogels are products that are used to be added to soil. They act as many reservoirs. They actually absorb a large quantity of water and then release it over time to provide a more uniform distribution of water to the plant. The two products that we're going to look at are Zeba and Stachysorb. I'd like to show you physically what these products look like. Let's first take a good look at the product itself. Let's take a look at the Zeba product. You'll notice that the particle sizes are rather large, but when you look at the bottom of this plastic bag, if you zoom in real closely, you'll notice a lot of dust materials there that in the industry we would refer to as fines. This means this product is dusty. I'm not quite sure what it is. Perhaps it's a uniform product itself, or perhaps it's a component of it which is separated from the granules. Now, if you look at the Stachysorb product, the Stachysorb product, you will notice that the granules are uniform in size, and even though this is a white product, close scrutiny of the bottom of this bag will show no fines, which exemplifies a quality material of uniform characteristics and more than likely uniform performance when, when applied in the soil. Now we're going to take a physical look in a small experiment to see what happens when you add water to these hydrogels. What we have on the lab bench here today is a sample of the Zeba product and a sample of the stock assort. You'll notice that we've taken two grams of the Zeba product and put it in this container and two grams of the stock absorb and put it in this container. The water that will be added has been measured. It's 160 grams of water for both samples that we're going to test here at this time. Now I'm going to add the water to the granular product. So if we'll put this in with the Zeba and the same quantity of water we'll put into the stock absorb. Now, as in any baking operation, we're going to set the clock. And we're going to let this experiment cook for a while. We'll come back and pick it up and make a direct comparison of the physical looks of each of these containers. OK, these are the two samples, if you recall, we talked about putting them in the oven and coming back later to see what's taken place. So 30 minutes later, here is your Zeba product. And here is the Stachysorb product. Let's take a look at the Zeba product. Both of these have been aging the same period of time. You will notice that the Zeba product is cloudy. I guess that's the starch that's in the material. But you will also notice that the, if you look at the top of the container, it's very uniform across the surface. It hasn't fully absorbed all of the water. Now, if you look at the Stachysorb product, these are like many ice cubes. It has absorbed all of the water to the extent that the particles have actually risen above the surface. It's a non-uniform surface. It it's actually shows very clearly that these, these tiny reservoirs has absorbed every bit of the water. Now let's take a closer look at this stock absorb product. Actually, if you put your finger in it, you'll see these little, little bladders move around. These little reservoirs actually float around. Each one of them is a discrete reservoir of water. That's what you're going to see under soil conditions. So let's take a look at this experiment now that we've finished. What have we actually observed? The Zeba product has absorbed a large quantity of water, but the cloudy condition of that water would suggest that the starch is, has suspended in it. If you take a look at the stock absorbed product, each of those particles has acted as an individual reservoir, discreetly absorbing a large quantity of water, which clearly shows that they're going to perform as reservoirs for providing that water to the plants.